Hello everybody, Power Chicho here, and welcome back to the Cathedral of Velvet podcast. Oh, another two weeks has come and gone, and we are just getting more and more news on on a whole bunch of games. So, uh, yeah, oh, hope you guys are doing well. I am doing alright. Oh, uh, like, the past, like, couple of weeks have been uh, a bit weird, like, not gonna lie, like, oh. Uh, I had to get my phone repaired, for, for example, uh, like, well, it's not my main phone, it's, like, my secondary phone that, that has, like, a bunch of, like, apps and, and games that, that I play that's not on, um, that's not on my main phone, and out of the blue, like, it just, like, stops charging, or it was, like, very difficult to charge, so I went over to, like, a, a repair shop that a friend, which is a company that my friend works at, so I just like went over there, just like, yeah, can I get this repaired? And I'm like, okay, sure, it's gonna be a couple of days because they have to, you know, mail it in, and you know, do that. So I have them repair the charging port as well as the battery, cause, uh, cause, um, because the the battery was draining fast, and like the main reason was like the um, like I was playing um. Game called Kingdom Hearts uh, Dark Road, and it was they had like an AFK mode portion of the game where it's like, oh yep, just leave the game running and uh, yep, you'll you'll gain points or whatever. So it's just like, okay, I'll leave it on overnight, and then you know by the time I wake up, it's like, oh no, the battery died. I lost some some progress. So it's just like, well, I'll just leave it plugged in during the entire time. It's just like, oh no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> Because now it's just like it's continuously playing and, you know, the batteries, you know, it wants to go down, but it's not. So it's just like it just ruined the battery. So I'm just like, yeah, let's just uh, change the battery along <laughs> with that, too. So got that repaired. But as soon as I got it back, I saw that the screen was messed up. Like there was like some light blotches going on over there. And they initially said, like, I heard from, like, the back, and like, oh, this must have been water damage or something like that. I was like, no, <laughs> no, there wasn't any water damage. I've used my, my, none, like, none of my consoles or phones or anything has ever gone water damage at all. So I'm just like, no, it's not water damage. It, like, I literally brought to you guys, I turned on the, the phone, showed you guys, like, yep, it works, nothing, all that, and... And then guy was like, oh yeah, uh, you know, well, we'll, we'll open it up and then, you know, we'll call you back, uh, after a bit. So I left, it was like barely like 20 minutes. I was like almost home and guys called me up like, Hey, yeah. So the issue was a technical error on our side. So, uh, you, you won't be charged for, you know, the screen pair or whatnot. So yeah, uh, it's going to be a couple of days for the uh, screen to come in so you can still use so you can take back the phone and you'll know, still use it till you know the new uh, screen comes in so it was like all right so it was just a couple of days uh i was waiting for like you know a call back i didn't hear anything so i was just like okay they say it was gonna be like about a couple of days after like five days like i went over back to the place and like, I was like, hey, uh, is the screen here? Because I didn't get a call back. It's like, he was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, it's here. Uh, we can, you know, uh, take, take your phone in. It'll be a couple of hours. I'll come back to pick it up. So I did, came back, and it was like, and I came back. And he's like, oh, yeah. So it turns out that the part that we got wasn't matching our phone. So it's gonna be another couple of days for the screen to come in. Like, uh, okay, another couple of days with the mess up screen. Okay, so come back a couple of days. They've uh, they got the new screen and uh, yep, put it in fine. And then when I took it, I I haven't left the store store yet. So uh. Uh, looked at it, I'm like, okay, it's good, good, I did, and I looked, I pulled down the screen, I'll see, like, you know, the pull drop-down menu, it was like, oh, 
there's like a huge line right there like on like the right side of the screen is just like hey buddy uh, excuse me um there's a huge line on screen and he's like oh uh didn't see that there uh let me just check the nose it's like oh yep uh one of our you know uh fixers like put a note that oh there's a uh, uh dead pixels on the screen so we ordered a new one and uh we it should be here later today and should be installed you know before it closes and this is just today so yep so gave them the phone uh waited till like about 6 30 or so to pick it up and yep now it's all good and new i wish it didn't take you know three weeks for for it to like to be fully fixed but hey now nah, now it is now it is and it's good and new now i just need to get a new screen protector because obviously it's on the other screen so I had to i have to get a new one but yeah uh that that was my <laughs> That was my uh, troubles for like the past three weeks or so. So yeah, uh, ho hopefully you guys had a better week than, than me. Um, on the main channel, uh, I was able to upload the last, uh, the, the quote unquote last episode of Portable. I'm currently working on um, the FPS answer right now. It hasn't, I just trying to record as much as I can because that game is pretty hard. <laughs> I uh, haven't really, yeah, I haven't even posted, like, the first episode of The Answer yet, so, yeah, please just stay tuned, just, just know that it's gonna be a pretty hard game, <laughs> yeah, there's gonna be a bunch of grinding that, that I'm, that, that I'm happy to do, and, uh, yeah, oh, let's see, oh, yeah, Nintendo Direct happening, you know, got a whole bunch of Mario games, like, I'm excited for, but am I gonna pick it up, uh, that, that, that's gonna be, a, uh, another thing that, you know, like, am I gonna pick it up? Am I not? Like, uh, I think like both uh, Persona 5T and it's either Wonder or Super Mario RPG comes out on the same day as as P5T. So just like, oh man, why, 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 why is this happening? Uh, I'm gonna, have, and also uh, like a like Dragon Guidance happening on the same day too. No, no, it, it's happening a week before. It's happening a week before, I believe. So it's just like. Three games coming out like within a week of each other. It's just like, oh, what what do I do? Like, most likely, no, I'm not. I'm not gonna pick up uh, Gaiden because it's most likely digital only. So, yeah, I'm pr probably not gonna be doing that. But uh, P5T most likely, and mm, not not really sure about the Mario. Because and also in November is a horrible time because a whole bunch of birthdays happening in November and then next month is Christmas. It just, ah, too 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 many stuffs happening in November December. So yeah, just that's why I kind of hate though those months. <laughs> just like too too many things to buy, and I I, I want to save some money. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's what's been happening around me. Uh, so I really hope you guys are doing well, and uh, if you guys haven't, please uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, because any support to the channel is very great, and if you guys are on, you know, want to just listen to it, it's also available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts, those are basically the top three platforms that will accept, uh, accept my, my, uh, uh podcast, so I'm gonna try to see if any other podcasts will be able to, you know, like, uh, get this but uh at the time being just those three so yeah so let us get started to the uh news we got a whole bunch of news today uh we got a leak we got a rumor happening so and uh, a couple of interviews so yeah let's just get into it this episode of the cathedral of Velvet podcast is sponsored by w w is a clean energy drink that's made to give you focus with no crash jitters, or inks like other energy drinks. There's also no filters or artificial dyes. W contains vitamins like B3, B6, C, amino acids, and 150 milligrams of caffeine. W allows you to have faster reaction times paired with laser sharp focus. They have a variety of tubs, shakers, accessories to choose from. If you want to start winning more, they made this for you. Go to the first link in the description below and use code POWERJ at checkout to save 10% on your order. That's POWERJ. At checkout to say 10% on your order. 
Thank you for Dougie for sponsoring this episode. Now back to the show. And just to remind you guys, we are on uh, Persona Central, so please check those guys out. I'll leave all you know the links of their articles in the description below. So yes, again, please check them out. You know they 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 get those uh, information quick as as soon as they can. So let's start off with uh, some SMT5 news or rumors. So the first up is SMT5 Complete Edition teased by notable leaker. Hmm. Okay, so SMT5 probably probably getting ports. So found via Gamitsu uh, editor Sal Romano via Reset Era, a user by the name of Jun on the Chinese form uh, A9VG has teased the existence of a complete edition re-release of SMT5. Okay. They teased the existence of the game through a cryptid animated GIF featuring an image from the SMT Online 2021 recent music concert, edited with the uh, SMT5 world map, occasionally flashing the, world, the word complete edition in the style of SMT1. Uh, June is known uh, for teasing upcoming... Oh, make sure you guys see this. Uh, June is known for teasing upcoming announcements in the style, and has previously correctly teased the date of when Armored Core trailer would be released, the title of Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion, and among a number of other things. So yeah, if guys aren't like really seeing this well, I pulled up the uh, the Risa Era uh, link. So it goes from this, and then it goes to this. So basically saying uh, like complete edition, complete edition, complete edition, and that's the map of SMT5, and this is like the uh of the the text and apparently uh you can see also right here uh Stephen Hawking is there which is a a character in SMT is looks similar to Stephen and I believe is also named Stephen as well so uh yeah, to the left of the gift image you see Stephen Hawking the SMT uh, series features a wheelchair bound uh, recurring character named Stephen who notably did not appear in SMT5 and the image itself is directly from the SMT 2021 concert. Yep. So maybe this SMT5 may uh, complete edition may have some uh, you know new content perhaps. But um, let's just continue on with the article. In 2021, SMT5 was a part of a leaked NVIDIA GeForce Now database. Uh, now, uh, NVIDIA's PC streaming service, which contains a large number of unannounced games at the time. Also listed from Atlas was Catherine Fullbody, which is yet to receive a PC port. Uh, data mines of SMT5 at launch also found reference to a PlayStation 4 and PC platforms. Uh, so with upcoming events, Atlas is also currently celebrating the 30th anniversary of the SMT series, which, in which is to include an upcoming concert at Anime Expo on July 1st. Atlas is stressed, however, that there will be no announcements at this event. Okay, so... No announcements at this event, however, like, uh, I believe, um, like, there was an article that we saw earlier that was, like, uh, well, I think that's probably related to the Persona news that we're gonna, uh, see soon, I believe. Let me just, uh, yep. Uh, but, uh, I mean, they could, they could be lying. They could be lying, just like, yep, there, there's no announcements at this event. But uh, as we, you know, remember last time, you know, with the uh, <clears throat> Persona 25th anniversary, just like that announcement of, uh, you know, the ports as the last thing, just like, yep, that that, that, that was horrible. That, that sucked. Really wish that wasn't a thing. But uh, yeah, um, it, it could it could happen. It could happen. Uh, Cause like. This is like, again, this is like uh, the first time uh, uh, we're having uh, an SMT concert outside of Japan. So this this could be a big thing, but who knows? We we, we have no idea. Jun is, you know, seems like a credible uh, leaker. So it could happen. It could absolutely happen. So, but continue on with the SMT news. Uh, we got a 30th anniversary concert paid stream but for Japan only. So on May 
fifth and the sixth uh, 30th anniversary concert for SMT series was held at the KT Zep Yokohama. A paid live stream of the recordings of the two concerts has now been announced and to be broadcast on the 30th. So, uh, yeah, so it was just a re rebroadcasting of um, a previous concert. Uh, and each of the concert requires a separate ticket purchase, which, not gonna lie, that's kind of dumb. Just, uh, how about just, uh, you know, just one, oh, yeah, there, there's a two performance ticket set, uh, for 7,600 yen. So, like, not even discount for, like, oh, yeah, you're buying two on one time, so, hmm. So, yeah, you, you're where we're getting just a rebroadcast of the concert that happened. And, oh, look, cool digital ticket. I mean, that that's all right, but just, uh, we wish it was, um, wish it was something a bit better. Uh, just, I'm just making sure that, you know, just not anything else is happening. But, uh, yeah, sucks that, uh. Uh, well, I'm not sure if this is, I, cause I just loaded this up. Like I had this trailer, I had this, uh, tab up open for a while. So I'm not sure. Like, uh, let me just refresh the page. Just make sure, you know, it's not just a, a, gram a grammatical or error to, uh, yep. Uh, yeah, we'll see. we're already past the, the, the purchase days. Like, uh. June 23rd, so now the viewing is from June 30th, which is in a couple days from now, or probably tomorrow at the time that you're seeing this. I'm pretty sure it's uh just a couple days after this. But uh yeah, uh so you guys want to watch the recordings of the the concert. Yep, there you go. Kinda wish, you know, we, we had something, you know, a bit more to, you know, to uh to, to see, but uh, unfortunately not. So continuing on, we're done with the SMT five news. We're going on to metaphor. So we got the confirmation of a simultaneous worldwide release, which is absolutely great. Awesome to you know see how this trying to continue the worldwide release uh, uh, schedule. So let, let's just see. During the ses special announcement live stream for Metaphor V Fantasy today, it was confirmed that for the first time that the upcoming RP fantasy RPG will have a simultaneous worldwide release in 2024. It was previously leaked that Metaphor would release on PS4, PS5, and Steam in addition to Xbox Series and Windows PC, and today's live stream has officially confirmed those re release platforms. In October 2018, Sega said their attention uh, to further simultaneous uh, worldwide releases while particularly mentioning the Atlas West localization team. The presenting team general uh, producer uh, Kazushi Kazuhisha or Kazuhisha Hisa Wada also expressed his desire to share the Persona news with the West faster in 2019. Now the post pushed for worldwide simultaneous release for Alice games is apparent, with Soul Hackers 2 and SMT5 being the two recent major games which have which have them, and Persona 5 Tactica, Persona 3 Reload, and more Metaphor of Fantasio will have a simultaneous global launches in the future. So yeah, good on them to try to have uh, worldwide releases at the same time, because obviously people, these are going to be, well, Reload and Fantasy are going to be most likely going to be very long games in 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 the in their with their releases. So hopefully, you know, we nothing bad happens. Hopefully there's no delay <laughs> that'll, that'll push them back even further because obviously we, we don't want delays. But as you know what uh, Miyamoto says, you know, a delay game or like a rush game is bad forever, but delay game is something good or so, something along the lines of that. Yeah. So I hope that Alice is doing all right with this game. Hopefully everything is going well and everything is, is, you know, I think between like 
three and uh, metaphor i think metaphor got my uh, hype up more <laughs> i mean I, again like i do like uh, persona 3 like it's my like my most replayed game ever but you know seeing metaphor after all this time it, it definitely got my hypes up most definitely especially with everything that I've, like we've seen from the game just like it looks amazing it looks cool so uh, continuing on from that we got to oh god oh god ah uh, yeah uh, refresh refresh ah uh, uh yeah yeah there we go there we go <laughs> sorry that i blinded you just uh no there, there was just like no darkness so we got an interview with the, the with metaphor's composer meguro on religious music working with alice after independence so yeah you guys don't know uh uh, Meguro used to work with Alice for, you know, with all the Persona games and whatnot. Eh, but after a while, I'm just like, yeah, I, I want to try to, you know, w work with other uh, studios with their games. But at the moment, I don't even recall, like, what games, like, uh, Meguro has worked on. Uh, let me just uh, look up real quick. Uh, Shoji Meguro... Guru, uh, songs after Atlas. Maybe, maybe, maybe Wikipedia can uh, show me some games that he has worked on. Uh, so it works. Let me just see. Okay, so I'm seeing the some movies. Okay, I'm seeing uh, what well, the three movies seeing uh the anime okay so since his independence he's basically worked on one other game outside of alice which is uh guns on darkness never heard of that never heard of that but uh wow he he <laughs> he hasn't really worked on anything outside of alice like they just keep bringing him back and just like Hey, uh, can, can you come back to make new music for us, please? <laughs> Which is like, oh, all right, you know, I guess I guess I'll do this for you guys. Oh, oh let me just look uh, guns on darkness. Never heard of it. Oh, I recognize the art style of that cover. It's like um, <clears throat> by like Ilya Kuzov. Uh, I I have his artwork, but uh, yeah, uh, it, it it looks pretty good. I do like that artwork. Uh, I'm looking at my phone at the moment, but just uh, yeah, I do. Let me just see. Hmm, it's a turn-based tactical RPG like Metal Solid and Persona. Wow, he can't even leave the Persona space because it's just like oh, it's like Persona. <laughs> uh but yeah you know Meguru is a, it's a good he's a good composer he's he's really good at his job but uh continuing on if I, I keep on saying continuing on just like yeah what we're doing so uh this week's issue of weekly Famitsu magazine 1803 includes interviews for the upcoming fantasy rpg metaphor v fantasia the interviewees are the three lead developers from Alice's studios here, known for their work on the Persona franchises. Director uh, Katsura Hashino, character designer Sh Shijinori Sojima, and sound composer Shoji Meguro. Video, this follows a video interview published during yesterday's announcement's livestream for the game. third part of the interview is with the sound composer Shoji Meguro discussing the thought process behind the music's religious overtone and working with Alice after his independence in 2021, or 2021. The first part of the interview with uh, director Katsura Hashino can be read here, which I think I'll, which I think is one of the uh, other, uh, I, th I think, well, let me see. I think we either talked about this prior, uh, We just see uh i don't think we covered this last time uh just 
Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think we would cover that. So, so we'll cover that bit after this, and let me just check out. Uh, so Chima. Um, let me see. Load, load, load. Okay, it's weird how, uh, <laughs> how the, the, uh, the director's image is just wrong. While well, this one's all right. And uh, yep. Yeah. So let's continue on with the interview. So what was your approach in uh, composing this game's music? The music composition revolves around religious music. However, it's important to know that I'm not drawing inspiration uh, from real world re religions. Instead, I approach it from the, the perspective of what kind of music would be appropriate if there were a religion within the world of metaphor. I delve into this approach and explore what kind of music would match that context. There may be elements reminiscent of chants or hymns, but I'm specifically expressing the religious music within the framework of the game. I want to create a unique atmosphere and construct it with a rich and grand or orchestral arrangement, while still maintaining a fantasy-like quality. The music that plays in the first trailer is exactly like that. I've composed orchestral music for the Persona series as well, but the focus was mainly to create the scores for events that matched a scene's timing and direction. This time, I'm looking forward to creating an orchestral track specifically for in-game BGM during gameplay. That was my first impression when I was asked to work on the project. God dang, let's just drive back the great, the great worm Homo uh, but Butera. God dang, it just looks freaking ugly. God dang. <laughs> so what was was this direction your proposal? It was my proposal to use religious music, and Hashino had a request for it to also sound like music playing inside a protagonist's head. Our ideas com com complemented each other nicely. Until now, I have often composed music as something between the player and the world, but through discussions with Hashino, we are shifting the focus more towards the world itself this time. Even the vocals incorporate elements from this world, based on Esperanto. Did the music composition process go smoothly? It wasn't easy. It wasn't that easy. Initially, I tried to create I tried creating orchestral music with a focus on instruments from the medieval world, but when I had it reviewed by Alice, they gave me feedback saying it was too conventional, since players expect eccentric music styles like in the Persona series. They said, be more like Meguro-san, as usual. <laughs> with that in mind, and considering that the background, I decided to switch directions and create a dark, cool, and upbeat songs without imposing too many restrictions on the instruments we use. Yeah, and I think I just realized that this is just the the interviews from the uh, the video, most likely. But like, no, no, like, <laughs> I feel like it, it feels like it was just the interview from the video. But like, no, it, 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 it's more than that. It's more than that. Okay, so, uh, yep, continuing on from that. Why do I keep on saying continuing on from that? God dang it, get rid of it. <laughs> so moving forward from that. <laughs> I see hearing that story certainly raises expectations. There have been times where when I've where I've got too carried away, and some tracks ended up feeling like battle music instead of background music for a town. I still actively adjusting them. I'm I'm looking forward to it. By the way, since your independence in 2021, it's been a while since you were interviewed as a composer involved with Alice. Have there been any changes in your approach to work or in in way of thinking. My relationship with Alice has shifted from being a company employee to a position where I respond to the client's requests. However, I've always believed that it's important to express the development team's vision of the world through music, so in that sense, not much has changed. On the other hand, I also enjoyed having the freedom to interpret and create music according to my own preference, which is how I composed the for the Persona series. But in my current position, I also feel the need to adhere to the client's requests and not deviate too much, which leads to the feedback of being too conventional, but I realize that what Alice is expecting me is the usual strange music, so I do my best this time as well. Please look forward to it. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, that I, that, that kind of happens when, when you're like, hey, you're, you're, you're independent now, so you gotta do what uh, 
got to do what, what what your commissioner did or like I, I think that's the word commissioner so yeah and also you guys here like buzzing that guys uh mowing the lawn out there so sorry about that but anyway 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 it, this was a pretty good music with <laughs> pretty good music pretty good interview with miguro i know he does good music just uh yeah he sing and also like it's very rare, rare that i'm seeing you know like uh, the, the faces you know especially with a uh, miguro and uh, i mean uh, uh sojima and uh miguro like uh, it, it's very very rare i know i think hashino is like newer but like uh, so sojima i i have his art art books <laughs> and like seeing shoji is like yeah i like seeing the, the faces behind the 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 work being done and no go go back go back <laughs> i want to see the face but not too close <laughs> but yeah uh so some some of the questions are kind of similar to what was in the video interview which i still haven't uploaded i gotta upload that video <laughs> I gotta do, do this after this. Like, it's all ed edited and whatnot. I just, like, haven't made the thumbnail and uploaded it yet. So, yeah, I really gotta get to that. So, yeah, wanting to be, you know, like, uh, you know, we, we, we can't give a callback to, to the, you know, real world religion. You know, we, we can't have that. Just like, this sounds too, too like my Christian music or too much like my Buddha music or what, what a religion. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what, what Buddha music sound like. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but like, try, try and make it sound, it's, make it sound unique to its own thing. That's, that's what, that's what they're trying to do. And, you know, try to give it, you know, uh, with, with each towns and, I think said he said before like try try not to make it like too much like battle music but like for like just the towns and whatnot yeah so like uh, some tracks end up feeling like battle music instead of background music for a town it's just like yeah i'm, I'm too used to making battle music <laughs> how, how do i make it how do i make music for a town <laughs> but you know we're, we're gonna be hearing more and more probably you know as you know as you know we get trailers uh coming out but glad, glad to hear you know like you know he he's still doing his own thing but just you know giving mine to atlas just like yep i gotta do it for atlas because i'm being paid by them <laughs> so with the next one we got the uh uh sojima interview and i'm trying to remember uh yeah this is 21st yeah, I was just like trying to make sure. I, I haven't covered this in my uh in the previous episode, have I? It's like uh this is twenty first, twenty first, yep. So yeah. We haven't we haven't covered this. So hmm. Which which one should we go for? Should we should we go with character designs or uh let's go with this one just to get it out of the way with the, the director and fortunately we're gonna have to uh make this disappear real quick boom yep it's all naked so uh director hashino interview on fantasy persona similarities counter and deadline system okay so let me just try to all right all right we're back fix up the screen pretty sure that that was cut hopefully but uh yeah, the, it's pretty small on screen, so if guys please uh, check out the original links in the description, so you guys can read it uh, uh, w along with me if you like. But uh, yeah, this happens sometimes with uh, with Persona Central site. It's just like, hey, here's the mobile version or something like that. Cause yeah, it's just like it, it, this is definitely the the mobile version setup. So, anyways, uh. So this is uh, the same Fimitsi article now with uh, uh excuse me, uh, now with the uh, Katsura Hashino. So, uh, it's been a while since we last interviewed you when the pro this project started. Could you re reiterate why you and you and the other staff who have worked on the Persona series decided to create a fantasy RPG? At the beginning, we didn't have the premise of. Let's work on fancy next. Instead, we want to create something new, and we sought out staff staff members who were willing to start from scratch with us. That's how Studio Zero, our in-house production team, 
were was established to create the scheme. As we discussed various things together, and we started to notice the world, the word fantasy came up frequently. We released many games in set in modern world, such as Persona and the Shin Megami Tensei series. However, fantasy genre has always been popular, and we became curious and about the reasons behind its enduring popularity. So we want to explore that in our own way. Previous interview, you said. He stated, if we were to think about the unique experiences and emotions that we aim for in our previous games can only be betrayed in the world of fantasy, then now is the time to take on this challenge. Ashino says, yes, one of the themes are, one of the themes is the keyword utopia, which you see in the revealed footage. People love fantasy world, but they often embody fantasies and ideals that cannot be achieved in the real world. However, for those who live in those worlds, our everyday world may seem as a utopia. And let me just scroll up a little bit. From that perspective, what if by playing the game through the perspective of myself in a fantasy world, what the protagonists are trying to achieve was somehow applicable to our own reality? What if after completing the game, we were able to experience something that brought back some feelings of to the real world? With these questions in mind, we inserted scenes of the real world at the beginning of the fantasy of the trailer. And this game's title called Metaphor represents that correct? Originally, classic fantasy literatures often had those kinds of elements. On the other hand, if we were to make a game, we could depict the world completely completely divorced from fantasy, and such content might be a good distraction from the daily grind. However, completely severing that connection would be a waste, don't you think? I believe that the reason I believe that the fantasy continues to compel people even now is because it is rooted something in, in something more than that. I had the opportunity to at one point think thanks to your generosity to absorb observe a debate among the development team. The topic was what kind of discoveries and emotional moments make people feel like they're on a journey? Oh my bad. Uh mosquito or something. It was a bug. Turn on this like this. I can probably see it and just smack it away. Me. All right. Uh, if the style of the Persona series typically involves traveling from one central hub to various places, is metaphor more about traveling from one place to another? That's right. As the protagonist travels around the world, he meets people who support him and become a for a source of emotional strength. They don't they won't follow him on his journey unless they are party members but bonds formed through various events along the way will always remain with him uh we thought that if players could experience uh yep, that's definitely a moth it's definitely a check by the light Here. i think i got him i saw something fell <laughs> probably fell somewhere on the ground <laughs> caught on camera power Slap the bug. Uh, but but anyways, uh, but the bonds uh, form through various events along the way uh, will always remain with them. We thought that if players could experience this kind of feeling, even though the structures may be different from the Persona series, we would be able to we would be able to create a game that's uniquely their own. I mean, this is like the the, the bond system and like social link that that's like the kind of similarities that, that we're getting here. Cause like, hey, it's being made by the Persona team. Hey, well, why don't we just have you know some social links in there too? But we won't call it social links. They're bonds now. <laughs> <laughs> in the release footage, there are scenes where the protagonist shakes hands with various people. By meeting people who represent the value of the locations he travels to, the protagonist can discover something he he doesn't yet possesses, and grows from that influence. The game is uniquely is unique in that way. It incorporates this kind of interactions with others as a source of strength. I see, in games like Persona 5, players have the freedom to decide how to spend their daily lives starting uh, from the first semester. But how does that, but how does the journey of this game progress? This game also uses a so-called calendar format. When people travel these days, they decide to go for tourist spots in, and in what order to make their trip more efficient. Playing these uh, itineraries can be part of the enjoyment of journey, right? In this game, there are deadlines for things to do in each destination. 
players are free to choose how they spend their days within that lim time limit, and they can find plenty of detours that are not directly related to the main story. It sounds like it'll, it'll be quite fun to explore. I get the expression that you and your team uh, have deconstructed the elements of the games you worked on before, and we interpreted them as a fantasy RPG. Yeah, that, that seems like what's happening. If there was an element that matched the know-how we've taken a long time refining and want to express in this game, we've incorporated it without hesitation. Of course, we didn't just use exact same elements in the past without making them appropriate for this tile. You, if you experience the Persona series, you will likely easily understand this game system. And even if you are new to it, but enjoy fancy RPGs, I believe you will be able to enjoy with fresh perspective. At first glance, it seems like the game is taking a conventional approach, but it seems like there's something more to it than that. At one point, I showed the game to the staff members from another development team, and I re received a reaction like, I thought it, it might be a conventional fantasy RPG, but I believe that it's different. I took that as a sign of encouragement. This game has various aspects that differ from what is typically considered fantasy, and players will be able to feel that in many ways, both big and small, when they actually play. When it comes to Atlas games, we tend to expect something more than the ordinary. The release is scheduled for the next year. Are you near compl completion? It took some time. Most definitely took some time. It took friggin' seven years. <laughs> we are at the point where we can say that we are on our way to achieving the work we've aimed for. We continue working on this tile firmly without any uh, deviations along the way. And we are now approaching the final stages. We hope that you will be able to imagine what we we have in store for you based on the footage. And please look forward to the feature updates. Yep, and 2024 for almost every platform except P except Switch. <laughs> Which is uh, a lot of people, you know, like, uh, got, well, I don't think a lot of people got upset. Just like, I guess it's the point that, you know, it was, was announced for uh, Switch, you know, during the Nintendo uh, Direct recently because just like oh yeah you know because it happened last year but i guess it's not happening but yeah i i i did enjoy you know this this interview seeing uh uh hashino's uh his thought process and what's been going on uh with the game you know seeing like oh yeah using you know some elements from persona with the persona series like the calendar system and the bond and basically like reinterpreting that for uh metaphors because hey like we worked on this how about you know we changed up a bit so it's it's somewhat different than you know what we've worked on before just like hey i made this change it a little bit now i made this <laughs> but uh yeah uh the calendar system feels like you know maybe this is like more more deadlines compared to like a persona game because like I, it feels like uh like it, with the persona games they're pretty lax with the with the time limit it's just like oh yeah you got uh you you got like a like three four months <laughs> before you know the, the next event or the next major event but um yeah it, it hopefully you know this is like more i, I do kind of want a little bit more strict i guess but like not not a trick that is like oh no you 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 only you have every, every day count you cannot miss a day or 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 you're screwed not, not like that but just uh just like um like I, I guess more focus I guess more focus is, is is what I'm I'm trying to aim at well, hopefully it's more focused on you know what what we have to do for for each day because this is that we we're traveling around you know the world so if we have to like use our time most effi efficiently so like oh hey let's detour around here that'll save us some time but by doing that we'll miss you know the couple of people that we would have met and that would be you know some kind of improvement i mean that, that could be a thing but do you know if that that that's that that might happen but i feel but i think like you know the the people that we see on screen are here they're, they're most likely party members that i, I know him uh this little bat rabbit creature thing and uh the redhead elf girls are definitely party members uh, i don't know about uh uh these two here and that person back but not, not sure but uh 
we're, we're gonna get get more information soon but uh when don't know but uh yeah but glad to to uh got to hear uh the director's thoughts about all of this I'm glad that we're just getting more information about about the game now back to sojima and uh, let me just uh Big shoulder strip, uh, that, and uh, do that, and uh, boom. there we go. Much better. So now, Soji was interview on the initial concept art and the protagonist's design. Ooh. And uh, if there is a cut in between this, don't worry, because I'm just trying to mix some food. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just, uh, but, but anyways, so again, another interview from Famitsu. Now we're talking with the character designers, uh, Shinjinoi Sojima. So, uh, the second part of the interview, we basically went backwards, just like, oh, we, we got the composer. I think that was third, the, the director, which was first. And this is the second part. <laughs> yeah. It's basically right here. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, with the interview, it has been a while since you've last worked on character design for a fantasy-themed project, last being, uh, Sell It Do It, uh, Deus, in 2004. Holy cow. Dang. Dang, that, that's almost, that's almost 20 years ago. Holy cow. <laughs> what was your enthusiasm for this project? My childhood and early days, works like Record of Lotus War and Dungeons and Dragons were popular, even uh, before becoming professional, I often drew fancy styles illustrations. I was very excited that metaphor gave me with a chin. Gave me, I was very excited that metaphor gave me with a chance to uh, draw the subject matter for work after a long time. However, as work released under Atlas, I was prepared for it to not only be enjoyable but also be challenging. There's no point in drawing something that looks like existing work, I want to emphasize the design and core concepts that can be made specifically because of this game. I also want to incorporate my favorite fantasy elements, so I drew various things uh, uh, wholeheartedly. When the project was first announced, many concept illustrations drawn by drawn by you were also released to the public. <clears throat> Early concept art right here. <laughs> Those illustrations were partly to see what it would look like if I were to, th to depict fantasy at the time. This game embodies the themes mentioned by Hashino, but instead of keeping that in mind from the beginning, I want to first, first ignite pe the, the passion for classic fantasy within itself. At the time, the main character's age in relation to the game's themes was not yet determined, but looking back, I believe I that even within those images, I presented characters who bear glimpses of the characters you see now. So this is the uh, one of the concept art from very many years ago but uh, yeah the elf girl here like the design changed so much i'm not gonna lie like elf girl from from uh the initial reveal uh project we fancy to now looks very different like and like even like i know i think this is like what water art water brush art something like that it's like we can't really see the details of like the characters and what they look like but uh like, I don't recognize them from the game that we've seen so far, but, hmm. Uh, continuing on. Uh, speaking of the character designs, were there any unique aspects or challenges specific to this game? Yes, there were. Uh, for example, I believe that in order to create designs with depths, it's important to consider the background details, such as level of civilization and industrial, industrial development in the world. The extent of sewing techniques and even the existence of screw technology, etc. Each part of the character's equipment, down to the smallest detail, contributes to the overall world building. The first trailer depicts large vehicles as the game's as the game's development progress. More elements that invoke advanced technologies were added one by one. This led to an increasing number of considerations on the character side as well. Unlike the Persona series, which draws inspiration from modern society, this game has its own unique fantasy world. It involves many uh, processes specific to this game, which are both enjoyable and challenging. Yeah, like uh, in the interview, I believe, like in the video interview, like it was said that 
uh sojima was inspired by like 60s uh design for like a lot of the characters like like even like the main character and like a girl in like black and red i think we can see no uh let me see if we can find that girl i think i think it was in this one uh you guys can't really see it but uh yeah the girl right here like very inspired by 60s uh not sure about him but um well you guys can see not sure about him but maybe maybe uh but uh going back uh, doo -doo -doo. uh this pl the player is meant to project themselves onto the protagonist living in this world right while there is a player equals protagonist dynamic the protagonist isn't simply a blank slate i design him as an androgynous young man with a gentle yet intriguing aura possessing with a strong gaze uh in the case of fancy project if the player is already fully immersed in that world from the beginning Players may find it difficult to see the world from the same perspective. Interpreting the world in their own way is part of the charm of fantasy. In the context, the protagonist is a pure being, while the supporting character is all unique in the cast that adds color to the story. I think I said this in a video interview kind of thing on my main channel. Please check that out. But, uh, uh, I don't see the androgynous vibe from this. Not gonna lie, but uh, okay. It's uh, seeing uh, each character ha having their own add the, the individual characters adding you know color to the story. Like, yeah, I mean that that's what like each characters are kind of supposed to be. Like, uh, like take Persona for example. Persona Five on is red. Ryuji is yellow. Yusuke is like navy blue, dark blue. Uh, I I guess like Makoto is like kind of. Uh, oh, I, I get well, either Yusuke is white or blue. Uh, you know, now that's just being a little bit difficult because the color is just like there's multiple colors with their you know color, color scheme. But well, like, uh, Haru being like sort of like purplish, pur purplish pink. Uh, Morgana, I guess green, but I guess more with his helmet. Like, I guess black with a mix of white and yada yada. So, yeah, that, that, that's that's what I'm kind of going with. So, yeah, each character having their own colors. Yeah. The little fairy girl who is with the protagonist side gives off the somewhat familiar modern vibe. Was she? <clears throat> that was a deliberate choice. While in the Persona series, the main characters have a more of a real life likeness in this in this game. The protagonist is. Is portrayed with a more heroic portrayal throughout the story on the other hand the fairy girl's action and behavior may give off a sense of belonging to modern society i believe that her presence also contributes to the story to the development of the story and the character convent the characters conveying this game's themes now again i i, I don't get the, the the modern vibe from her i'm i'm guessing like it's uh, like the haircut from from her or something like that you can like barely see it on screen there but uh yeah i i i don't feel that like i'm getting like i feel like she's more like oh is she she's another pixie character like uh like in smd3 hey hi pixie or just at least a call back to her but with the last paragraph of this interview uh that's interesting while we have to wait way, way further yeah while we have to wait for further updates to learn more about the other characters could you give us a little hint about them uh, one thing i can say is that the various races that appear in this game will be important so i hope you'll pay attention to them instead of assembling uh the typical races you've seen in fantasy we've just depicted races that exist particularly in this game's world each with their own unique backgrounds and origins some of them are quite unique and present as races but it was also a challenge to incorporate them as individual characters so please look forward to encountering these distinct characters so uh i'm guessing like there is they're doing like their own take on like you know the fantasy characters elves goblins uh orcs probably just like you know their own like their own interpretations of, of like the fantasy characters that you know we've usually seen like in other 
film, games, yeah, media, and whatnot. So that that's probably what what they're planning to do, because like, like, because like elves looks somewhat different. Uh, like we have a triclops. I I guess that's a you know another race. Uh, fairy. I like again. I don't know what that animal thing from uh from the trailer is. What the trailer is is, but is definitely different. It is definitely a different character that I I have I personally haven't seen. So yeah, so great great to you know read read, read on the interviews from like you know the big three of Alice essentially uh you know uh, Hashino, uh, Sojima, and Meguro. Uh, all nice to hear you know the, all their uh, thoughts and you know and uh, what, what's going on behind the scenes of the game. And we are excited for for this game to come out. I'm I'm very excited to you know, see you know, what's what what's this game been you know cooking for like the past seven like almost eight years like by the time the game releases so that'd be really awesome to to see so now we are going into the persona news oh uh, let's go into uh well this is like the most general since we're talking about both games that we're gonna be seeing ah 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 see bright too bright reload reload and just in case i'm just gonna reload like the other tabs as well <laughs> just in case because like i literally just like okay load them up pull all the tabs out and not even look at them <laughs> all right so now we have the atlas to hold the percent five tech gun and reload panels at anime expos with the english voice cast so, yeah uh talked about the last episode of you know p3 had a full re english cast read change so i'm not sure and i haven't even read this yet so uh, i'm not sure if like those cows are gonna be in there but i believe i think i saw a tweet saying that uh the p5 uh some of the p5 cows is gonna be there so uh let's just re read this and just see, see what it's about so Following the following list, the two Atlas panels at on uh, Anime Expo's 2023 schedule, quickly teasing upcoming announcements. The description has been updated with the full details of the two panels. Uh, yeah, I think I probably this is from the 14th. Oh, hold on, hold on. I think I'm. I probably. I think I probably covered this because. Uh, it's, it's been two weeks, not gonna lie. Uh, actually, no, no, I, I haven't covered this because, like, I've recorded this the last episode on, on the 12th, so, yeah. This is, this is technically new news! This is technically new news to, to the channel. <laughs> uh, but I think what I covered was, like, a, a leak of it. So, uh... The morning panel will focus on Persona 5 Tactica, and the afternoon panel will focus on Persona 3 Reload. So Alice presents the official P5T panel, uh, July 3rd, from 10 to 10.50, so 15 minutes or so, at the Peachy Hall. Alice Wilson will be presenting their exciting new video game, Persona 5 Tactica, joining the English voice actors as they talk about their experiences behind the scenes and swing by to grab exclusive P5T poster. And now with the Reload panel from... 7 to 7.50. Okay, get ready for an evening of excitement with the Atlas West as we bring you the latest and grace on Persona 3 Reload. Join our special guests as they take you behind the scenes and into the recording booth. Dive into the dark hour and awaken uh, the depths of your heart with Persona 3 Reload. Captivating re-imaging of the genre-defining RPG. Reborn for the modern era with cutting-edge graphics and gameplay. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, they're, they're gonna be talking about the game. They're gonna be saying, yeah, this is all the game. This is the detail about this. And they're probably gonna have like a QA session, like right at the end. I wonder if like someone's gonna say, hey, um, well, why was there a recast for Persona 3? You know, could, could you guys, you know, just bring, bring in some of the cast? They might, ask, someone's gonna ask. Like, I feel like someone's gonna ask that. I mean, they might, because I feel like you know, some people, you know, want, want, want some answers about that. But who knows? Uh, you don't want to see like like the comments down here. 
<laughs> uh, hopefully the next trailer will like, we'll show a little bit of English dubs. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm surprised by the new cast. Yeah, Yuri. Yeah, people have thoughts about the game. Uh, but after this, we got a, a little bit of the leak regarding Persona 5 Tactica, which is uh, which is um, I I I I guess this is like kind of big, so. Persona 5 Tactica Story DLC to feature Kasumi and Ikechi. <laughs> Which, oh, day one DLC, I hate it. I hate especially Story DLC. They literally take this out from the game main game and just split it off. <laughs> but, uh, yep. Troy user MBKKSSTBHZ5, who has freely previously uncovered the domain names for P5T and P3RE, and also has stated information for both of those games prior to their announcements, has shared that Kasumi Yoshizawa and Goro Kechi will be featured in Persona 5 Tactica. The day one story DLC called Repaint Your Heart was announced alongside the games last week, described as a new episode that introduces highly anticipated characters available exclusively in the DLC. The Twitter user also had previously stated that the characters in question would be Kasumi from Persona 5 Royal and Akechi, and today they have shared what seems to be official uh, key art for both the characters. Yeah, it, it sucks that the only way to get them is as DLC, which is available day one, and that absolutely sucks because this should not be day one DLC. Stop with day one DLC. Day one DLC is bad. And I and I'm I'm not gonna be a hypocrite. I will say I have purchased deal day one DLC before. Like you've seen it all on my main channel, like some like the, uh, like the level grinding areas for like some games. Just like, yeah, I, I bought that, and I feel dumb for for buying that. Hey, hindsight is twenty twenty. Most likely not gonna do that, and not gonna be doing that anymore. Cause, God, like, it, it's so like at least you know it was like the story DLC, but like, story DLC for day one that's just. That's just not it, man. Like, even, like, with Soul Hackers 2, people didn't like that how it was like, oh, yeah, uh, the extra party member is tied to a DLC because you don't get any more party members in, uh, in, in the game because it's just like, oh, four, only, only four party members, that's it. N no more comes in anymore. Just, oh, man, that, that, that is annoying, and I wish this wasn't a thing. Well, what does the comments have to say? <laughs> uh, I hear that Alice is doing day one DLC stores, day one story DLC. It it takes the the paid win uh, DLCs from the past games, ramps them up the scumminess, considering the entire campaign will have been completed alongside main game. Raul's yeah, that that was fucking dumb. Like Raul being locked behind the special edition or like just DLC in general was just dumb. Uh. Uh, yeah, so it's fine if it's not a day one DLC, like, yeah, like that, because, like, at least, you know, with, like, the, these, like, these are, like, actually being made, like, like, uh, like, throughout, like, the life, it's not, like, immediately, because it feels like, you know, oh, hey, yeah, they, they've been working on this, at least, but, oh, man, it, it's, it's dumb, like, uh, but if it's DLC that's announced or is released for layers, he's a size or DLC or the answers. Uh, yeah, it's, it's okay. At least because the solution, it took more time. Yeah, that, that's essentially it. It's the solution that oh yeah, it's been work. It's been in the works for a while, and that, that that's that's the, the the main thing that like kind of annoys us. Just like stop, stop it with this. We 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 want it in the main game. But it seems like that's not gonna be a thing. That's annoying. <laughs> but uh, well, let's continue the the P five T track with the with the art unit behind uh behind Tactica and Reload Designs. Ooh, we, we we got we got a hefty one. We got a hefty one. Well, well, let me just uh. Well, let me just get, get a little break, get a drink of water, and we'll be right back, all right? <laughs> 
All right, we are back. Just gotta make sure I keep on the time because there, there's there just some food being made. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Famitsu once again, but uh, from the previous issue, 1802, which has a round table of with members of the Persona R team unit, which has a previously lengthy interview about several minor personas. So the interview was conducted with PC studio character designer Sojima, Persona 5 tactic uh, art designer, a uh, director, Oribe, and general uh, Persona team uh, producer, uh, Kishi Kazuhisha Wada, as they discussed the process behind designing characters for the new games in the Persona series, including the two upcoming titles. So now here's the interview. Uh, when it comes to the Persona series artwork, Sojima, who have been uh, primarily responsible for designing the main characters since Persona 3, as well as the design and illustrations by the team staff, seems to have become more prominent. First of all, please tell us about the current structure in place for this work. Around the time of Persona 4, the original version on PS2, uh, there was only Oribe and myself mainly handling the series artwork. Since then, thanks to the expanded media within the series, new staff members have joined to accommodate those projects and each of them has gained experience. Oribe in particular was in charge of designing minor characters like the school's teachers in Persona 4. Oribe, yes, that was my first design related task. When my artwork is displayed alongside Sojima's, it shouldn't create any inconsisten inconsistencies. So I'm conscious of drawing in a way that fits the setting and project's art style. For the Persona series, it often starts with the handling sub characters such as the teachers and then progresses to design the social link characters and eventually the main characters. We assign staff members who can maintain consistency and a cohesive tone in dividing the work. The teachers in Persona 4 were quite uh, particular or peculiar, but they certainly invoked the game's feeling regarding the artwork of Persona 5 Tactica, which has its own unique touch. How did you approach it? <clears throat> Many people might associate the director of the direction of characters deform deformity and pain with the Persona Q series. However, this is not the sequel within the Persona Q series, and the game genre is also different. So we aim for artwork that would be most fitting for this game. Over the course of seven years of since the release of Persona 5, a lot of expanded media and spin-off have been created. If we were to work on a new game, we want it to be a challenge, one in terms of both content and visuals. I believe that was shared that was a shared mindset within the entire development team not just for me uh director uh, medea also mentioned in an interview that the characters in this game move intensely during battle so is our work meant to showcase that yes in Persona q the silhouettes were round with small hands and feet a chibi style familiar to japanese people however the 3d models in persona 5 tactica intentionally have increased proportions emphasizing the size of the hands and feet it might lean more towards a carbon fork like deformity. It might not be to everyone's taste, but there were concerns raised within the development team, questioning if it fits if it comes too if it comes off too strong. When you present something strong, the reactions you receive will also be strong. So as creators, we are always prepared for that. For me, I had a clear intention, so I created reference materials and explained them. If we have, if you view the balance from an overhead perspective, Characters with the usual tall proportions would appear thin and sick-like. Additionally, uh, it's challenging to depict the dynamic gestures and movements with the proportions from Persona Q. So I insisted that this kind of deformity would make uh, would be good for this game, and passionately explained it. Medea also supported the idea. Furthermore, we had experienced mod modelers who have been involved since Persona 4 and were proficient in creating both 2D and 3D models. It was reassuring uh, to have them in, to have them in, bringing the characters to life with their vid vivid por uh, portrayals. So yeah, you can see in the portrait right here, like yeah, kind of like bigger hands, longer legs, and like you know the skinnier body. Just like yeah, I, I, I can I can kind of see that that happening. So Arena, the new Arena, Arena, the new character was also designed by Orbe, right? Yes, this game has a theme of revolution, and Erina was envisioned as a powerful character leading that revision, oh, revolution. In previous entries of the series, the focus often fell on the growth of the individual characters, but Erina is different. 
she stands at the forefront, leading her allies and boosting their morale. Even if she, she herself, it get injured. Ugh. Even if she herself get injured, I keep that in mind while designing her. Uh, her appearance while holding the flag is also impressive. Indeed, the flag is an essential prop for a revolution. A battle, she used it as a spear. We decided on it because it has vi high visibility when viewed from a distance overhead perspective. And she will most likely get a persona, right? Right? Huh? huh? She, she's, so, she's solely going to get a persona, right? Does Sojima provide any feedback on Oribe's artwork? As long as we share the same basic idea, I leave the individual design to Oribe. In Oribe's case, if there's anything, if there's anything, she comes to consult me. If that doesn't happen, I assume everything is progressing smoothly. I see. It's all about trust. What about Persona 3 Reloaded? Or, well, Reload. After another staff, man, another staff member is in charge of that. I drew the original versions about 17 years ago. Since then, there have been various spin-off and anime movie adaptions. I believe how the protagonist looks have been updated in the minds of the fans. In order to keep up with that image, the staff worked on Reload have emphasized the proportions in the illustrations and added lighting effects. Being trusted with the project by Sojima must be the highest praise for the staff. I'd be grateful if that's how it's perceived. At the same time, there is also that feeling that I can't afford to lose. So I want to continue that work uh, actively. Sojima doesn't often praise me directly, but since I've been entrusted with the task, I can't let let up. Just as I've I've learned from Sojima, I also feel the need to pass it on to the young generations. It's a challenge for the team to convey the Aliceism and Personaism that have been passed down from the source. Watching Sojima, I can sense that Oribe is set, steadily inheriting the DNA of the Persona series artwork while also capturing the trend of the times. I believe that truly good artwork will never fade away and that they will continue to create such artwork in the future. I hope you look forward to both the game and its artwork. So yeah, I understand that, uh, you know, you're going with the tactical style. There's going to be various, you know, uh, uh, camera angles to the game. So you want to have, uh, you, you want to have the characters stand out so that, you know, they, they appear fine, you know, at, at any angle and they, they're able to stand out like Morgana's kind of like the same, basically just like a little bit more bigger hands i guess <laughs> or just like the eye. well the face is like fairly different just uh well more more well they, they say before like more more chibi-ish style but but not more but not leaning into like q so it's just like elongated bodies and whatnot like i i, I do like that i do like that little style they, that they change and i and i'd like how you know uh uh, Sojima and Orbe has been working like together like so long. Like they, they they know like uh you know if something's wrong, I'll just go to each other. If not, they yep they they they're working fine, right? Right? Yeah, I, I I trust I trust each other. But uh yeah, we we're, we're seeing you know the updated models for uh Persona Three because I mean the the character models they they, they look fine right right uh, the, the original uh you know i mean not the models but like the designs they, they look all right and original but like I, I guess you know they could use some a little touch up for for the modern age you know just a little just a little touch up make it look a, a little bit better it, it's it's pretty good i do like the the updated uh the designs of it i i think you know at least with junpei junpei is a, a little different because just like the, the smile is a little bit weird. It kind of feels like he's giving a side eye than like, you know, kind of, kind of looking at us. But but that, that's just my thoughts. But what, what do you guys think? You know, let us know in the comment section down below if you're watching this on YouTube. But the next thing I think we get is the one well, we're going to Persona 3. Uh, Persona 3 Reload. So we get another lengthy interview. So more from uh, Famitsu 1802. So we're 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 gonna be talking about we're, we're gonna be talking with the producer Wada, uh, the director Takuya Yamaguchi, and the producer uh, Ryota uh, Nitsuma. Discuss the goals of remaking Persona 3 and the advancements compared to original. So 
the complete remake of Persona 3, which has been long awaited by fans, has finally been revealed. As a director, as a creator, you must be excited to make this announcement. Yes, Persona 3 is a very important title for Atlas. Yeah, because it's the very first game, you know? <laughs> and for staff like me who have been involved since the development of the original version. And above all, for the players who have loved this work and the characters so much. In the Atlas survey we conduct each year, Persona 3 has been at the very top of the list for tiles that fans want to see remade for the past few years. This remake has been realized because of everyone's support. <clears throat> so yeah, people say that, say that, oh man, the Atlas survey doesn't mean anything, it's just, it's dumb or anything like they take and They take the surveys and they make the games, you guys should do the surveys, you know? You know, whether you, whether it's in Japanese or English, just do it so you, your voice can get heard. <clears throat> so, what are your goals behind this remake? As a basic premise, we didn't change the scenario or the characters that that form from the foundation of Persona Three. We like the place to keep. We like the place to be able to enjoy the graphics and functionality on level of the latest number of works in the series, Persona Five, Persona Five Royal. We decided that the way this remake should be. Follow that stance from the development. Water is in charge of overseeing the development as the general producer. It's the first time that Yamaguchi and Nitsuma are appearing in the Famitsu as members of the Persona team, so please introduce yourself. I'm Yamaguchi, the director. When the original version of Persona 3 was released, I was only a user playing the game. After joining Alice, I started working on the series starting with 4, and I've been involved creating event scenes where 3D character models engage, engage in dialogue. Although I didn't have experience in overall development direction, I really loved Persona 3 personally. One day, I found out that Wada was playing a remake of it, so I raised my hand and expressed my desire to participate. And then we just, we selected him as the director. He, all, he, had also, he also had great love for Persona 3, so we took that into account. As for Adonatsume, he supported Yamaguchi as a producer and took on the role of creating an environment for smooth development. I'm Nitsuma, serving as a producer for this project. I joined the company through a career change, and even in my previous job, I was involved in game production. I enjoyed Atlas games and at that time as well, but I never thought I would end up working in my current position. As a side note, when you look at the development scene at Atlas, you can feel that everyone has a stronger inclination towards creativity rather than management. If I were to compare this to an RPG party, it's a scene with a lot of attackers. While, I, while understanding that this greatly contributes to the quality of the work, I thought it would be good to have healers and supports so that everyone could focus on development without worries. So that's why I decided to focus on that aspect in this project. Oh, and just like seeing uh, the ill-fated Maya. It's like, oh man. Uh. Oh, sing, sing a little bit, you know, of the game. Pretty, pretty nice, pretty nice. It's amusing to have party, to have a party full of attackers. Sometimes intense debates occur within the party, right? Yes, that did happen. Alice has released tiles in the past where they remastered old tiles for current platforms and added volume various elements. However, this time it's the first remake where we completely recreated the graphics from scratch. Therefore, discussions on how to change or add the to the elements were more intense than ever. This project sav, with nearly half of them having played the original versions as users, approached the development with individual love and dedication. So yeah, this is basically Alice's first from the ground up remake of a game. Like previous remakes, they, they have like based like, it's just like minor tweaks. Like uh, for example, like Devil Survivor to Overclock. That's technically a remake for the 3ds overclock but it's majority the same game like it still looks the same so plays the same just adding you know a couple of touches here and there uh i think also like with the etching odyssey games like with the Otola series i believe like those are majority the same just you know added you know graphical updates tweaks but majority it's the majority of the same game it's it's, it's the same so the goal was to be faithful to the original and at the same time when there were additional when there were additions or changes Yamaguchi actively led the team and discussed them with Wada to get his approval. I believe there are many series fans who have a strong attachment to Persona 3 
including myself, so I have high hopes for this project. The large change is the updates to the graphics. Was it difficult to rebuild the original PS2 release with the same level of quality as Persona 5? Yes. For the characters, we put a lot of effort into creating the Persona, creating the 3D models and portrait illustrations for the conversations at the level that users will, will have what I've come to expect from the current standards. The portraits are very expressive and the 3D models are so detailed that you want to zoom in and zoom into the screen and look at them. Yeah, like the, the, the new models look very good. It looks amazing. The school, town and dungeons have been reconstructed in the line with the 3D models. The field has not just been enlarged to match the character's proportions, but also increased the density of the game's element and scenery. Everything has been redesigned, but Tartarus, the central dungeon that the main character's progress through, through to reach the top, has undergone a particularly significant change in appearance. In addition to changing the visuals, we have added more elements for the players to explore to keep them from getting bored and having added and have added the options to dash while moving. Okay, so adding dash around move, it, I, uh, it's, 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 yes, it's a good thing to have, but like, as like a feature, just like, as noble features, like, eh, okay. <laughs> but yes, make sure that that Tartarus isn't boring, because it is a very boring place, just like, yep, going up, design looks very similar to the previous floor nothing's really changed and just oh next floor is just a redesign just just not, not much has changed basically but glad, glad you know it, it's getting you know some kind of overhaul to 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 the game uh regarding the scenario it's been said that the character's side stories will be added can you elaborate on that since the main story is an ensemble drama I thought that there was still room to delve deeper into the stories of the characters who didn't get as much attention in the original version. It will be a new element that is different from the social links that will deepen the relationship with specific characters. Speaking of the main characters, uh, speaking of the main story of Persona 3, there were also works called Persona 3 FES, which was based on the original release with various additions and changes, and Persona 3 Portable, where you can select the female protagonist. How will Reload? Be positioned in relations to these. Uh, I like to clear things up so there are no misunderstandings. Persona 3 Reload is a project that was conceived as a remake of the original Persona 3 for the current platforms. Therefore, it does not include the additional story scenario that was added in FES or the female protagonist from Portable. However, this does not mean that elements added to the main story in FES is, are not included in Reload at all. So yeah, just saying that it's not having the answer basically from Fez or the protagonist, but it, it might have like, you no, know, uh, I guess as the playable character, not playable character, social link and the Elizabeth dates. The remake has a substantial volume by including the side stories mentioned earlier. The total number of voice lines is one of the highest in the series history. The reason for the increase in voices is not just limited to the side stories, but we'll be talking about that at a later date. I expect there are many series fans who are attached to Persona 3, as am I, so I have high expectations for the game. Thank you very much. In terms of development progress, we are in the final adjustment stages, and I feel a sense of accomplishment that it will certainly satisfy those who have been waiting for this game for many years. During development, whenever there was a moment of certainty, I often tried to forget that I work at Atlas and instead put myself in the position of a fan waiting for the remake. Thinking about what would make me happy, the entire staff has worked with this perspective in mind, so please look forward to it. From the planning stages, this project has the keyword rebirth. In other words, it's, in, it's a game that we have approached as a team, with the concept of deep deepening rather than simply involving Persona 3. I believe we, we've, we've been able to deliver this in-depth exploration that won't disappoint fans, everyone's expectations. I hope you all pay attention to it. We have, uh, we, uh, we are very happy to have reached this stage where we can avail, avail it to everyone. We have a strong desire to deliver it to you as soon as possible. We hope to those who have picked, who have been waiting for a long time, as well as those who has never played Persona 3, will pick it up and enjoy. Thank you for your continued support. I should not have this light because I don't need this anymore. There we go.
go. Yeah, I was hurting my eyes a little bit, but uh, yeah, glad that you know they're very dedicated to you know trying to make this as good as possible. It sucks out, you know, uh, most of the stuff from like portable, including like you know the side, uh, the social links from uh, por the female protagonist from portable is not going to be in there, but at least you know, I get social link and whatever you know, new addition that wasn't uh, the answer is you know, is being part of this remake that's that's pretty good i'm glad they they understand you know the stuff that's gonna is needed for for this remake and i, I am very excited to just see you know the new models and you know hearing the new performances from the english voice cast as well hopefully they do a good job because they have a big shoes to fill in you know with, with, with this game so uh ho hopefully you know it, it, it's it's gonna be done good so the last article we're going to be going through today, and I know this, this is going to be like a major news focus episode, but uh, yeah, we have, oh, there's an in-depth interview, a very in-depth interview. So just, just uh, pre prepare yourself every once because this is going to be a big one. And I, I, I know I'm like, you guys probably not know this, but I've been like taking so tiny breaks because I'm having food and in the oven so i'm just like constantly checking but uh before we get into this i'm just gonna take a a minor break just gonna you know ch check on that just and actually prepare myself some food so i'll be right back this is gonna be cut so you guys won't notice but here we go yeah. this portion of the podcast is sponsored by you the patrons on patreon.com slash cafe podcast as low as three dollars a month, you can support me and the podcast with benefits such as exclusive posts, early access to the podcast, no in-video ads, your name scrolling in the video, and much more. So please consider supporting your boy over at patreoncom slash podcast. And now back to the show. All right, we are back. It took a while. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. So. <laughs> trying to make uh, this pork tenderloin that my dad gave gave, gave to me is just like okay I'll, I'll finally try 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 to make this yeah that that, that was nasty i think just like the flavoring that that was like given i think was like like some golden rotisserie or something along the lines that like nah. it's either the flavoring it was off or the way i prepared it was off one of those two was the issue i didn't like that Maybe next time I'll try a different way of preparing it, or just you know. But uh, overall, like, yeah, I I I, I kind of have to like like toss it because it, like it, it did not taste good. It, it didn't taste good at all. <laughs> just like like first bite was all right, but as soon as you like start chewing it, it was just like, yeah, no, no, it, that, that 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 doesn't taste good at all. So yeah but uh anyway so let's get back to this to our final article this is this is gonna be a lengthy one this is the of course the in-depth developer interview about gameplay changes and kibi p3's uniqueness <clears throat> so for gamer has published an interview uh with reloads develop development staff director uh, takuya yamaguchi general producer Bada, and uh producer nitsuma so this is a similar interview but uh with some new summer uh, interview like uh Mitsu, but with some tip new tidbits of information <clears throat> all right so firstly uh please associate me with reload so we know that many people want a remake this has reached us in many ways including the survey which people should do uh that atlas conducts each year it's always been the top of top trials that people would like to see remade it was also it was also an important project for us on the development side, and something we couldn't start half-heartedly. The idea has been around for quite some time. However, the development did not progress until the later half of 2019. What was after the release of Persona 5 Royal on PS4, <clears throat> or was it after the release of P5R? Yes, yeah, so quite a few people started working on it around the end of P5R's development, rather than after P5R was completed. Almost all of them transitioned to the development of P3R. Uh, P Studio is working on a new game, is working with a new game engine, and it will also be the first project on this scale to be released worldwide simultaneously. So yeah, they're working 
at least P Studios working with a uh, Unreal Engine for the first time. But uh, the Team Maniacs, I believe, uh, is team name work with the uh, Unreal Engine with uh, SMT5. So they they know each team are starting to learn more. So I think what we have now, P Studio, uh, Studio Zero, and Team Maniacs are are all now working with the uh, Unreal Engine now. So they're trying to get used to it. <clears throat> In that sense, it was both a remake of an important work which made the Persona series what it is today and a new challenge for the development of the Persona series in the future. So tell us what kind of work P3R is. It's a full remake of Persona 3 released in, tw to, not 2016, 2006 for the PS2. Elements such as the world view, story, and characters are unchanged from the original version. However, the game will be remade taking into account uh, modern design and functionality so can be enjoyed to the seniors of the current Persona game. Putting it simply, this is a remake that aims to allow players to experience P3 in similar ways to P5. Persona 5 is the title that has become the standard for how the games for, for, huh, for how the games play for current Persona fans. We know this from surveys and other sources, but also because P5 is a title which has expanded the popularity of the Persona series worldwide. So for both domestic and overseas fans. I think the players who have been with the series from the start are also used to P5's gameplay as a standard. When this, when they go back to play P3 for the first time in a while, it feels like it's more difficult to play. So I wonder if the players waiting for a remake are coming from this position too. I will say, yeah, it is, it definitely feels different playing. I did play, you know, Persona 3, my history with like the Persona games was Persona 3 Portable, uh, Double Survivor, well, Double Survivor 2, then Persona 4 on PS3 via PS2 digital, then PS, then P5, so, and then now I'm currently, like, then I currently went back to play P3, and then, uh, well, P3 Portable, which is just a, a watered-down version of P5 and P4, and then, currently doing you know fez which is just a way different version compared to like three so just like it is completely different and like it really feels weird without all the you know quality life improvements <clears throat> there are a lot of persona fans who have been around for a long time and of course we have to expect the experiences they that they remember but, however as jambaguchi said earlier i thought that we could attend attain this by not changing the worldview, story, and character elements. And you know, I, I, I do want to, you know, like give them props for like, yeah, well, when we remake this game, we're going to try to be faithful, you know, and now I'm just, just going to be like, yeah, we're going to change how, you know, the characters are, you know, because, you know, it's a remake, we can do that. But no, like, I, like there are some remakes out there where they're just like, completely change how some characters are how they act just like oh we because we can you know <clears throat> uh, for the aspects that have been remade what exactly has changed firstly easy, the easiest to understand is the physical health system it was part of what made the original p3 unique but it's also removed into subsequent titles additionally it doesn't mesh well with the calendar systems which has become a staple of the modern persona series it's a system that restricts your actions when you're tired or sick, right? It was a core part of the game's progression, but the randomness of this element sometimes made it difficult to progress as you want. Yes, in the, in the current Persona titles, I think the basic way to enjoy the games is to schedule and plan what to do each day and time. But the physical health system creates additional stress for that player's playstyle. For that playstyle, due to its randomness, it is harder for the players to manage their time. And when they get fatigued or get sick, they can't take the actions they originally wanted to take. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just continue on before I say my thought. Even during battles, the randomness affected the choices a player can make, such as having negative effects on status or having allies leave on their own in the middle of dungeon exploration. The random nature of that system removed the joy from a player's deci decision making. Now, I, I do, I will say that, uh, you know, the, the, the sickness system does make P3 unique to compare to 4 and 5. And I, I do kind of like that system because just like uh, make sure that make sure your player is okay, you know? But like what just like P3, P, 
improve that just like oh the characters are sick or like they're tired they just they won't just leave you know the dungeon or whatever you know they'll 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 be tired you know but you know but like you know as a result you know being tired they'll just like you know not perform as well you know that's the drawback of it so like i feel like that versus you know the original p3 where they'd be like they they, they would be like uh, oh i'm just gonna leave bye guys just like just like that that was bad but like how they improved in p3p i think that was a bit better but like i i will say that there were moments when i played p3p especially if you've seen let's play on on my main channel where it's just like wow this sickness really sucked because there was i'm not sure like if it will be like part of the main story when it comes out for this remake like there was like three to five days where just like oh you're sick you, you won't do anything for this couple of days so that 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 is that's where it was just a bit annoying but there was also events that were also tied to being you know sick or being in a certain condition and that was like I, I will say that it was annoying because you can't control you know when you get sick or whatnot like you have to do like you have to do like certain actions like you have to explore TARDIS for like I don't know how many days or so or in a row for you to be tired and then get sick you know so that is just a little bit difficult to try to find you know how, how to do that because like some guys would say oh yeah make sure that you're sick by this day but you you might not be able to to do that so you so you won't be able to like do a certain cycle or, or get a certain item because of that so yeah, i i understand you know the the give and take of you know the the sick system but uh, if if the removing the the sick system you know improves it okay sure well let's just go for that <clears throat> uh do 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 uh I think uh, I, I think f uh, the way we thought about dungeon exploring was different in P3 compared to now. At the time, it wasn't like today where you can complete as much as the dungeon as possible in one day, but it was designed with the assumption that you would climb slowly over several days. So the fatigue system was one of the elements that made you go home. Yeah, that that also changed with like P P3P. Just like yeah, you can complete you completely com do uh. A block in one go and you, you'll be tired the next day or sick next day but that wouldn't matter because hey you're you're done with the you're done with that block for for the time i see as the series has progressed at, and the modern way of playing is to complete a dungeon in as few days as possible then spend the rest of the time on social links and other activities it's like an aiming to max out all social links on his first playthrough maxing all social links in one playthrough is not as hard as as it was in the original version it is about is it is about the same as doing so in p5 it's not easy but it is achievable with good time management i mean i was able to like get all all social links in royal but not in uh, the first playthrough of five so not not sure i mean like pretty sure like because you know they 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 made some changes to the days and make your ability availability different in royal compared to the original p5 so uh not sure how how uh how else they'll change this uh social links are one of the things that have that's changed from the original to the present at the time the game wasn't designed for you to to complete all social links in one playthrough i was really surprised when players achieved this through tireless efforts it seems that there are none of the digital elements from p3 fez or portable because it is standard p3 However, new episodes are being added to the main story and social links. The, scenar the scenarios were in the original, such as the main story and social links, are basically the same. There is no P3 Fez post story content or the female protagonist. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't any elements from those two titles. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, I said this earlier, but hopefully, you know, the social links, like uh, any of like, like the female social links from the the female protagonist side are in this version or just um or at least they appear in the game because th that good at least they appear or have like you know some side quests related to them that'd be pretty good in addition to in addition there are new scenarios which delve deeper into the world and characters in other ways 
For example, there are no social links for the male party members in the original game. So unlike the male party members in 4 and 5, they weren't able to build as much of a relationship or interact as much with the main character. Since social links maintain the same as in the original, we can't give them new ones. However, we will prepare content which will show their character and relationships with the main character in a different way. We can't talk about specifics yet, however I hope you look forward to it. Okay, cool. Giving side stories to have similar experience to social links for the male characters. I also want you to pay attention to the voice acting. I think voice acting is one of the high, uh, one of the high expectations of a fan for the modern Persona games. Everything has been newly recorded, and the volume has been increased considerably within the story and event scenes. For example, the social links in the series so far. There are many cases where they are only partially voiced. However, in P3R, all rank up events are fully voiced. Even though I had seen these events many times prior to development, when they are when they are voiced, I feel they resonate more deeply. Emotionally, I think even those who have played the game before will be able to experience this scenario in a new way. So great, they all the social links will uh, all the social links that will rank up at least if, if what I'm interpreting from from this will be voice. So if there is an event where just like, oh, yeah, we just hang out for the day, you might you might rank up soon. Well, will not be voice. I'm assuming, assuming if that's that's the case. It seems then that the text and voice work must have significantly increased then. Yes, it has the largest amount of voice work in the series. The Persona series already has a high playtime, but if you listen to the voices throughout the game, I think you'll be able to enjoy it to the fullest. So, more English voice acting, yay! <laughs> I'd like to know about the dungeon exploration's battles. But first, what's changed with Tartars? It's a dungeon with over 250 floors, each random randomly generated every time you enter, and it's directly connected to the game's world and story. However, the scenery doesn't change much, and progression tends to be monotonous. I wonder how this was tackled when creating the remake. It was the first thing that came up for a point for improvement when starting on the remake, and it was something which was uh, which had a lot of discussion about. Of course, we were aware of what the fans felt, as you said. However, Tartarus is closely tied to the world and story, so we couldn't change the structure of the dungeon. That's right, it, while, while it became monotonous, part of the appeal of P3 is the sense of emptiness as you gradually ascend TARDIS during the gloomy dark hour. Was our tree reconstructed while preserving this atmosphere? Yes. For example, we couldn't create a fixed dungeon like in P5 with this various gimmick by reducing the number of floors. So while fa staying faithful to the original, we create a dungeon which can be enjoyed without getting bored by adding numerous small elements. One example is conversation between allies. At regular intervals, there's regular dialogue that can be heard in the dungeons. Additionally, objects which can be destroyed and background movements have been added. These minor interactive elements and visual changes may seem insignificant, but they greatly make the gameplay feel more engaging and prevent it from being tedious. Tardis had been improved thanks to the expressive power of the Unreal Engine. We were able to faithfully adapt TARDIS into a three-dimensional widescreen format while capturing the essence of the original, but with a lot of variety. It is quite hard to convey with screenshots, but with the use of various lighting effects, visuals create an immersive experience, uh, preventing it from being monotonous. The character models and animation have also changed quite a bit from the original. There have been a there's been a change in expression and direction due to the change in head and body proportions. When compared to the original, the balance between stylish and comical will feel closer to the former. Because of this change away from the deformed models, it is harder to express the characters performing certain actions like falling on their butts during battle. But as cool as the and comical aspect is to P3, make sure to keep the aspects of it. Yeah, I mean... It, it, it does show, but like, I, I'm not sure like how to get like, oh, it, it's, it's hard to express it. Like, I mean, even if it's not like full on, like, you know, like it's not like full mouth movements, like you, you can see like, you know, the pain expression in their eyes, you know, like, and they, they do some movements like, like Junpei like fixes his cap after he like, he gets knocked down, something like that. So, uh, uh I don't know about that. Another element I'm curious about, just like TARDIS, is battle system. Firstly, the player can give direct commands to the party members, right? 
Also, has AI been improved in this day and age? The player can give direct commands, which has been the standard since P4. There's also an option where players can set a general direction and let party members fight automatically. So please think of it as part of the gameplay style of the Persona series is known today. I would also like to ask about the skills in during battle. For example, will the light and darkness elements have skills added in, as in P5, which deals damage in addition to instant death? I really hope. I, I, I haven't read this, so hopefully, you know, just, just fingers crossed, please, get that damage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I cannot talk about specifics yet, but for P3R, we are making adjustments to elements, including skills, so that the party members can all play an active role as equally as possible. Battles are tailored to fit each character's individually, so please look forward to information in the future. Uh, you can't say, come on, you, you gotta say that, oh, yep. Light, light, darkness skills deal damage. You know that's good, because like, there are like literally two characters in in the game that like are either light or damage focused. So like, yep, you have Hama, Mudo, it's a kills, but no other damaging moves relate to you know those elements. That just like it really sucks whenever like that that comes up. So I'm glad they're. You know, they're adjusting, you know, the skills to like to or possibly adjusting the skills to have, you know, damage to it at least. So there's that. I've been asking a lot of questions about what was pro progress to change and refine aspects of the original game. Firstly, we looked at the design of the original versions of to highlight elements that might have been overlooked compared to the Mon Persona series or elements that might not work today. We then discussed revising these parts with the development team and meticulously took into account things which bother players when they played the game in the past. I'm interested in gathering feedback from the players who have played the games before. Yamaguchi is one of them, but over half of the P3R development team were not game developers at the time, but they were exposed to P3S players, so they offer a different perspective to those, to that of those involved in development at the time so they can see the strength and weak points that dissatisfied them in the original P3. I see. It must have been difficult since fans often have their own Id idealized image of each person games. I imagine it was difficult to consolidate those different differing opinions. Yes, development, uh, development members who have played the games at the original release are strongly passionate about the game, just like the fans. As a director, I looked at the direction of the remake while striking a balance. But every persona, every person <laughs> has their own preference in focal areas. We had moments of debate like, if you get rid of that part, it won't be Persona 3 anymore. Or, no, if we turn that down, if we tone this down this way, it will still capture the essence of Persona 3. I would like to, I would watch those lively discussions and say, you can argue all you want, but please come to a conclusion by next week. I said jokingly, but I think this debate led to the creation of a really high quality remake. Each of each and every one of us respected the original work while cherishing our feelings of playing the game. We gave our opinions as directors, as developers working on the game production. While I wanted the one P3 to be as easy as as easy to play as P5, I was selflessly hoping that it would retain the oppressiveness and daring of the original. Uh, listening to the development team, it feels feels like there isn't anything to worry about. <clears throat> we definitely consider that. <coughs> Sorry about that. I mean, uh, like, I do want to say, like, you know, it's, it's funny, like, you know, hearing that, you know, the developers do have, like, you know, their own arguments about, you know, how, how the games sh should, you know, be like. But I'm guessing, like, that's similar to, like, what all game development is like. You know, it should be this way, or no, it should be that way, or... It should be both, perhaps. Like, no, it can't be both. It has to be one or the others. How about neither? No, it has to be one or the others. I don't know. Something along the lines of that. That, that. That's probably a thing. Okay, so, um, we definitely consider that. Uh, even after becoming a developer, I felt that P3's appeal was in its rough edges. While that roughness needs to be polished or in, in order to create a game that people will still want to play now, these rough edges are important to the essence of the game, so it's important that it's important that they not become too rounded. I believe that we have we have to think hard about that carefully with this remake. One thing I'd like to ask about before finishing: 
How would you come up with the name Reload? We originally wanted to add R to the title. There was a P5R as the definitive version of P5, and we wanted to approach this project with the same enthusiastic mindset. Also invokes the aspect of a remake, but calling it Persona 3 Remake wouldn't feel quite for a Persona series title. As a fan of the series, I like to be surprised rather than have something straightforward. That's right, uh, recently RE has been used in a lot of games, but it's different when you consider it for Persona. The summoning device, the Evokus, is the shape of a gun. We thought about Reload. Using it as a title, it should be reloaded grammatically, but it gives off a more gun action feeling. So we decided we settled on Reload. It took some time to finally decide on it, but it quickly became the chosen name within the development team. I imagine scenes where the protagonist and his allies reload the Vogers to summon their personas. Oh, yeah, that, that, that was a good question. <laughs> so finally, uh, please give a message to the readers who are anticipating P3R and the fans of the Persona series. Okay, we're, we're, we're nearing the end here. Firstly, I'd like to thank I would like to say thank you for, for for waiting. It's a special project for us, and we have finally been able to realize this remake because of everyone's continuing continuing to voice their support. We will continue to develop to de uh, deliver information in the lead up to release. So I hope that the original players will be able to see what has changed and what hasn't. And those who haven't heard of P3 before can follow along as it, it is a new game made from scratch. With this announcement. I think we've been able to show what P3 would look like if PCO was made today. Or if PCO made it today. We would like to show that it is a game that can be played today whether you are familiar to the original or not. It has been made with, with respect and care for, for the original version. The release is still some time away, but I hope that you will continue looking forward to it. Every time we complete a game, as developers, we feel somewhat uneasy, thinking maybe we could have done this better, or will everyone like this? We often approach release with this sort of atmosphere. With P3R, all the staff have been able to reach the final stages of development with the feeling that a good pro product has been made, which is rare. I think this is a title we can release with a lot of confidence. I want to release it to everyone as soon as possible, however, please wait a little, little longer. We are looking forward to the day we can share this excitement, not only in Japan, but also all around the world as global release. I'm looking forward to the future development for this release. Thank you very much. Ooh, that is a lengthy, lengthy interview. Like this entire interview itself, like took 25 minutes or so. <laughs> but you know, glad to see you know, like I, I do like you know hearing that yeah there are so much like discussion with like with the staff members like a bunch of the the team war did play the original p3 so they do have insight on like you know what should be in the game what shouldn't be game what should be improved what should not be improved and all that stuff so like gl glad to you know hear about that it's not like oh yeah i i, I bought this re like you know, I'm, i mean i'm sure there are like some employees that are like oh, i'm part of, part of this you know team but I, like i never played the original like i i i'm pretty sure that's some something but like uh, some of the uh staff like you know it, it would like really suck if there was like you know like uh like uh like it's a part of the team where just like yeah, I don't know anything about the original t original game, and I don't really care. This is our new, you know, uh, take on, on the game or something like that, and it will be like completely different from the original. Like it, it's it's the same in name, but like a whole bunch of things is different. Like th that that kind of you know like remake, you know, stuff. It's just like, yeah, I I'm not not a fan of those kind kinds of things, but you know. I I did enjoy just like hearing everyone's just uh you know it, it sounds like they they are really proud of what what they're doing and really they they really want this uh to succeed and both like the new fans of Persona and the old fans who played the original game or at least some version of Persona Three so yeah that that is very nice and and hear, hearing from all of them that that. Like it, it does, you know, warm my heart just a just a tad bit. It's it's pretty great, pretty great. And I'm not sure if just mentioned, but like, you know, I'm not gonna like. He looks like a freaking Chad. Uh, 
uh, Takaya Yamaku, she looks like a freaking chat or like so someone from, from uh, the Yakuza team. Just like, but yeah, and then we got Wada and then Mitsuma. So yeah, thank you guys for, you know, being, you know, making this game, you know, and you guys and your dedication to like, you know, try, try to make this game, you know, as good as possible for both like newcomers and uh, old fans of, you know, either P3 or just the series in general. That That's that really great. And, you know, and I'm glad that they, they're constantly, you know, um, well, I mean, like, at least with, with like some of the interviews, they're like, they're saying like, yep, we're taking, we're taking, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the results of the surveys and make it, you know, as part of, you know, like as, uh, well, what's word, uh, in consideration as, you know, like what games we make, this is like, keep on saying this, like do the surveys whenever they they come out whether it's english or in another or in japanese you know like you, i'm not sure if you're able to do it twice but hey do it twice because like if like one japanese one in english or what whichever just like just so you know you the voice can be heard and you know ho hopefully hopefully we can get that person i wanted to remake because persona 2 was also number one in, in terms of remake so please 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 do this <laughs> But yeah, uh, man, I, I spent way too long in, in, in this, in this whole cathedral of velvet of mine, just, oh, man, I, I know, not, not much terms of like, you know, doing, doing other stuff with, with this episode, but like, we, ha we covered so, so many articles today and I am very tired. Like I initially started recording this at eight or around eight or so. And then like, now it's like almost midnight. And I have to get this edited and uh, prepare for uh, for the Patreon stuff. And speaking of Patreon, look at all, all all the awesome Patreon members right now, because you guys, if you guys are part of the Patreon, you guys can get shadow, you know, scrolling on screen right now. So if you guys, you know, uh, if you guys want to spare a few bucks, you can get your names on here. You can also get this, uh, uh, you know, get this series out of free. Well, in, in video, no, in video ads. So that is, you know, one way of supporting. So yeah, I, I, I can't stop, you know, YouTube putting ads on video. So like, at least I can do just like no in video ads. Cause I, I, I need support with those ads will be great. But like, Hey, if you guys supporting me through Patreon, you guys, you guys don't get, get, get enough of that. So yeah. <laughs> But yeah, thank you guys for watching. All these interviews were just like very interesting. All all these were just like giving insight about like how like just like these de Alice developers are doing things. It, it's it's great. I'm I'm loving it, and I can't wait to you know find out you know some more information as uh as time continues on because we do have that uh Alice uh concert happening and uh P3T not P3R and P5T uh panels happening at uh anime expo this weekend so yeah hopefully you know some good information comes out from there but it's time to wrap up uh thank you guys for watching uh please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you guys are on youtube uh and subscribe to my main channel power juice show because that's where i do all my gameplay videos and stuff and make sure if you if you're listening on any uh any mobile or uh, streaming services follow me on there i'm on spotify apple Podcasts, uh, google Podcasts, all those and hopefully gonna try to add more locations uh later but though those are the main so yeah thank you guys for watching and i will see you guys in the next uh podcast later